Sauce here. This is a video lesson on infinite limits as end behavior. End behavior is a term. And what we mean by that, what we mean by the end behavior of a function is what's happening on the ends of the function, to the right and to the left, if we were to look down the axes in both of those directions on the graph. Typically, when we graph a function, we're usually concerned with what the graph of the function around the origin or close to the axes is doing. Because we can't have a perspective on a function that sees the, that can visualize the entire thing, we typically have functions, if we were to draw them, and they go off up, down, left, or right, if they go off into a region that is off of our paper and off of our graph, we put an arrowhead to suggest the function's going in that direction, but I've ran out of room to draw it. And in this example, there are typically two ends to a function. There doesn't have to be. The function could, in this case that I've drawn, go down to the left as the values of x go further and further negative. So a function has typically two ends. And we use arrows to suggest what's happening as it goes to those ends. Formally, what we're looking at to give us the behavior of the function when we have those arrowheads on those two ends are the infinite limits the limit of the function as x goes to a positive infinity. That would be looking to the right as the function continues to the right. And the limit of the function as x goes to negative infinity, that's what is happening on the left end of the function. So end behavior is investigated formally by the limits the two infinite limits, the limit of the function as it goes to negative infinity with the notation to remind you how to write that limit question down and the limit as x goes to positive infinity. In this case, in this graph, I don't know what's happening in the middle, but I can see my end behavior has been shown. The end behavior of this function if it was f to the right is it's going up and up it's going to infinity as x goes to infinity and the end behavior on the left as x goes to negative infinity appears that the values of the function are going to keep going down so the limit as we go as x goes to negative infinity is negative infinity these Infinite limits are attributes of the function. They are facts that can be said about this function or any function. Let me give another example. We may not know what's going on inside of a function or close to the axes of the origin, but we might know the end behavior like this. What about this one? I have a curve, and I'm going to draw another curve, and we're going to call this the G function. It's a single function. It has two branches. It may be piecewise. It may be a transformed hyperbola. What are the attributes of this function? Well, we could ask, what are its infinite limits? What is the end behavior of this function? One limit that we could ask is, what is the limit as x goes to infinity from the graph? This is informal because we're going to observe this limit by looking at the graph. Well, as x goes to infinity, I'm going to be looking to the right on this graph. And there's an arrowhead that suggests the graph keeps on going. But what do we think is happening as it keeps on going in this direction? 
it could be a little ambiguous. Is this arrow going down? Yes. But is it going down forever? Is the limit negative infinity? Or does this curve suggest that it might be leveling off and approaching a horizontal asymptote that it never reaches? Well, that might be hard to see from a graph. But do your best. It looks like this graph was intended to show that the infinite limit to the right goes to 2, a horizontal asymptote that this curve is gradually approaching but never reaches. So I'm going to say that the limit as x goes to infinity is 2. It's trying to get there, never reaches, but it is the limit. Let's ask another limit question. What is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? We're looking at the end behavior on the other end, the left end in this case. Take a look at the graph. The arrow appears to be going up. Does it go up forever, or does it level off to some horizontal asymptote? Again, it might be hard to read, but this graph seemed to suggest that the curve keeps on going up and up and up and therefore the limit as x approaches negative infinity is infinity. Those are infinite limits. What about inside? What about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? Here we have a one-sided limit. So we're going to approach this value in the domain, but we're going to come from the right, which means that I need to be looking at the piece of the function or the branch of the function that is to the right of what we're approaching. And I, as I approach zero, meaning I'm coming from the right, but I'm moving left, then the function goes up and up and up. I can keep my pencil on this function if I was able to see the function as it went up and I'd get closer and closer to the y-axis but never reach it, never touch it. There appears to be a vertical asymptote here as you approach zero coming from the right. And so the limit then is infinity. This arrow appears to be going up forever without touching the y-axis. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left has a similar situation. Negative 1 in the domain is here. The arrowhead on this branch or piece appears to be grazing that so that it keeps on getting closer but maybe never reaches. Reading graphs is imprecise. That's the nature of graphs. That's why an algebraic approach is the formal approach and the visual approach is informal because you can't be sure, typically. But we're going to say the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left is constantly and continually going down so it's negative infinity. What would we say about the region between these asymptotes at negative 1 and 0? This place in the domain between negative 1 and 0 does not have any function values represented in the graph. We could say that the function is undefined on the interval from negative 1 to 0. 1 and 0 are vertical asymptotes. The sides of the function approach those, and in between, we have no values of the function, so we could say it's undefined there. We can't put those values in. We don't expect any values to come out.